Hi, my name is Nicole Foran. I'm an Associate Professor of Art and Chair of Art and Design at Middle Tennessee State University. Um, I'm originally from Canada, but I've been living in the States since 2006 and became a U.S. citizen in Nashville last year, which I'm really excited about. I earned my MFA from the University of Cincinnati in printmaking, and my artwork combines um, both my printmaking practice and also drawing and painting. Uh, I was originally drawn to printmaking because of the kind of punishing nature of the media. Uh, it takes a certain amount of grit to kind of work through the process. Um, unlike painting where you can simply add a stroke and see an immediate result, printmaking there's an element of surprise um, and troubleshooting that has always been really interesting to me. The work behind me is a combination of prints with hand drawing, um, and some of them actually use the same woodcut underneath. Uh, I typically use um, relief printing in my work um, because I really like working with my hands. It's a very slow process uh, that can either drive you crazy or can be somewhat meditative. Uh, I think it works in both ways for me. Um, and so I tend to work on large-scale woodcuts uh, that kind of serve as the ground that I can then explore. Um, this body of work is a series that I developed about two years ago. Uh, it is very much a narrative that can be pieced together, but right now it's not being shown in a kind of chronological uh, fashion. Um, and that's really purposeful because I don't necessarily want to just be telling my story. I really appreciate when viewers can bring their own uh, experience and understanding to an image without it being really um, overt in terms of what my intention is. Color is really central to my practice. Um, when I was in graduate school, I worked exclusively in white and black, uh, and it really wasn't until later that I started exploring um, color, so it's kind of become a guilty pleasure. Uh, I really like working with gouache, um, and that is the paint medium that I use in a lot of these drawings. In some of these pieces, I've almost approached them, particularly in this one, almost like a, a paint by number, not where I literally number areas to apply color, but I, I have a very methodical process. And I would say that that's where um, my printmaking background comes through in my painting and drawing. So I still have a series of steps that I work through rather than just um, reacting very instinctively um, to uh, a mark that is already on the surface. I have a plan that I'm carrying out. I don't always know exactly where it will end up, but I have a series of steps that I have to work through um, before I feel like a piece is complete. Um, in terms of the work, symbolism is something that is really important. Some of the symbols are derived from my background. Some of them are uh, relate more to um, just kind of common uh, knowledge in popular culture. Um, animals are frequently included in my pieces, um, more obviously in one like the yellow perch, um, but also this piece involves um, a series of printed squirrels uh, and it's called a, a, a dre. You don't typically see squirrels gather. They actually are uh, more likely to fight each other because of they're looking for sources of food. So um, even family groupings can be quite violent. Um, and that is one of the things that have drawn me to squirrels. I wasn't interested in squirrels before I moved to Tennessee. Moved here three years ago. Um, there weren't a lot of squirrels in Texas where I was coming from. And so that was one of the animals that I started just thinking about and it started creeping into my work. Hello, my name is Sisvan Putabang Houghton. Thank you for having me and being part of this 100 year suffrage uh, art uh, show. Um, I am a professor of painting at Middle Tennessee State University. I'm gonna give you a little insight about what my work is about. Uh, in this exhibition. The first piece in particular is called Indirect Traffic. It's uh, based off of the series of The Secret War on Laos. Um, 
I am an immigrant refugee from Laos, and uh, all these works are uh, based off of the idea of um, after the secret war, um, but also the Vietnam War. This marks the 45th year anniversary for the Vietnam War, the end of the Vietnam War. So it's a very potent, um, uh, very important year for the uh, Southeast Asian refugees. These pieces started out relatively small, um, but they are the, the catalyst for these larger paintings that I have created. Uh, they started out with cutting out these fragments of these shapes of, of wood, uh, putting resin on it, paint on it, and really meshing them together, trying to get them to fit, which kind of symbolize what it means to be a refugee immigrant, is trying to become part of a community or a, a culture, but yet you're still kind of in limbo and you never really quite fit in. So these jagged combination of, of fragments and, and shapes are, are really trying to to fit together, but in a sense they are individual. And so um, a lot of these works are, uh, are basically exactly uh, part of my immigrant refugee experience. This uh, artwork is titled Disillusioned, and there's eight uh, pieces that go together, but the two that you see here um, are made from acrylic paint, spray paint, and resin on board. Uh, this is part of the Secret War on Laos series as well. And um, each individual board has a number on it, um, which goes back to the Vietnam War from 1963 to 1974, uh, was when the Secret War on Laos happened. And for every eight minutes, for um, 24 hours, for nine years, 270 million bombs dropped on Laos, um, which nobody really knows about. And so my work has been to advocate and to educate people about the secret war in Laos, but also about my own um, experiences, as, again, as a refugee and immigrant and how I adapted and um, assimilated into the American culture. Each of the piece are um, resin to, to symbolize the permanence of the war and how it has affected my life, but also um, the lives of so many other Laotians out there that are scattered out everywhere. Um, and the, the tape-like uh, vertical structure is symbolizing the bombing that are cascading and dropping into Laos. So that's what each of these individual pieces are about. Uh, the artwork you see here are titled Unstable, and they're part of, again, the Secret War on Laos series, but it's also part of a series for myself that is dust and debris, meaning that after math, after the aftermath of war, um, there's dust and debris, and these are from the images from the Vietnam War of the structures and, and the buildings and the houses that have been damaged. And so I'm taking direct reference, but also artistic liberties uh, to, to abstract and eliminate and to add to the, um, the images. Uh, they are all made with watercolor on paper, uh, but this is an ongoing series that I have also created um, using acrylic as well. And uh, these pieces though, are the most recent and they are more based both on the Vietnam War but also combining images of Syria and the way that other immigrants and refugees are, um, you know, there's nothing really different in terms of how war happens and, and what happens to people and so this is both my own reflection of what's going on but the way that I'm dealing with how it's affected me but also how it's affecting lives today as well and ongoing wars. So these pieces again are, are about the dust and the debris and the aftermath and the, um, the turmoil that ha happens after a war and, and how do you rebuild and, and how do you um, reconstruct and, and put a community back together. And so. Um, so yeah, they, they are quick studies, uh, but in a sense they are wonderful in, in creating a, an accumulation of images for myself to create larger pieces from. So, um, so, so these are what I call sketches, but they're, they're really quite wonderful to make.
So my name's Erin Anfinson. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Art and Design at MTSU. I'm also a visual artist and I usually make work in encaustic, which is a wax-based paint medium. And I also work in animation, photography, drawing, and a variety of other media. In the show, I have two series of works. Um, one is called Vestiges and the other is called Plaiting. And both bodies of work are encaustic infused paper that I collage on boards. And they're both sort of about the same thing. They draw from my interest in um, learning more about the native prairie uh, from my home state of Iowa, and also just native grasslands in general, which is uh, an interest that's influenced my work for a number of years now. Um, but it comes from two different sides. I sort of have a paradoxical relationship in the, the, the landscape of Iowa. Um, I feel nostalgic for it since I grew up there. Um, and I also sort of love the, the gridded fields, um, but I also have a sense of loss and longing for the native plants that disappeared. So these two bodies of works represent those two different interests and maybe where they merge um, using collage and uh, linear forms and also plant forms. The plaiting series is definitely more about thinking about the division of the land into farmland and some of those neat and orderly landscapes that I remember growing up as a child there. And the Vestiges series is a little bit more of an homage to some of the native plant life that used to be in those spaces but is now uh, no longer as, as prevalent. In the Vestiges series, um, I'm really partial to, I guess, all three in those series because I feel like they combine my interest with um, a divided memory and history of the space and knowledge about the plants um, following you know, the research that I've done and learning more about them myself. Um, trying to piece together a landscape that I didn't grow up with um, and has a huge impact on the environment in general. Um, the prairie landscapes are homes for pollinators. They support pollinator health. Um, and then also just the idea that I'm trying to piece together um, in a collage sort of way um, from, from bits and pieces of information and memory what those plants may have looked like. I think behind all of the work I do, whether it's encaustic or animation um, or even just drawings or illustrations of uh, native plant life, I hope that viewers of my work are encouraged and become curious to learn more about the native plant life in their own regions and in their own neighborhoods um, and just learn more about it and its importance in their ecosystem. The work from this show uh, was really born out of an artist residency that I did at Herbert Hoover National Historic Site in 2017, which has a reconstructed prairie on it um, in Iowa, where I'm from. Um, so when I got back from that residency, I began looking around my own local neighborhood in Murfreesboro, and uh, my family and I hike a lot at Stones River National Battlefield, and I got really interested in some of the remnant uh, prairie looking plants that I saw and ended up learning about an entire native ecosystem that's been endangered here in Middle Tennessee, which are the limestone cedar glades. So that's coming up next in my work is um, bringing that into my studio, the knowledge that I've gained um, through my collaboration with uh, the staff at the Stones River National Battlefield, and also from doing a artist residency there in 2018 through 2019. My name is Kimberly Dumans. I teach in the Department of Art and Design at MTSU. Um, I used to be a science major when I was an undergrad and I took a few art classes and ended up switching my major over to art. I went to grad school at the University of New Orleans. I finished in sculpture and my minor was printmaking and printmaking is most of the work that's here in the space. And the pieces I make, I like to play with color and shape. Um, the themes in this work revolve around quilt making and um, shapes and forms from quilts from the Underground Railroad. So there's a thought that there were a lot of symbols in those quilts that would lead on that path to tell you which direction was safe to go. So I studied a lot of those shapes and I've been using them, but those shapes sort of tie into shapes I was already using. Like a house form is basically a triangle and a square. So there are lots of triangles and squares in my work and 
from triangles, I got to diamonds, and from diamonds, I've gotten the circles. And so those shapes sort of dominate throughout, as well as the ideas of multiple fabrics for quilts. And so the collages are made from multiple pieces. I enjoy the idea that quilts are made from the remnants of things that people used. And so some individuals taking it upon themselves to collect those scraps and make another utilitarian item out of them. So the fact that maybe your grandmother collected those pieces of fabrics from her kids, from her grandkids, and they've been worn out and discarded, but she's collected them and found some aspect of them that she wants to use and created a whole other artwork with them to sort of keep that tie. And maybe there's a little bit of the spirit of the person that used it in that fabric. And so you're maintaining that sense of, I don't know, family in having those quilts. So I love the idea of that. A lot of the art that influences me usually doesn't show up in the work that I make. Um, my sculptural work, you can definitely sort of see a lineage in the things that I've studied. Um, I like working with the figure, the female figure mostly, and what content I can convey in that in my two-dimensional work, the prints and the collage. I jump around a whole lot. I like the idea of color, and I had a really huge sort of hurdle to jump with color because I didn't understand it a whole lot. So part of me, something in the back of my mind is constantly, how can I play with that to learn some more things from it? So I'm constantly playing with space and color. Uh, for artists that work with it, Yves Klein did these prints with the female figure, which is kind of what drew me in, but there's this blue he uses that he patented that no one else used, and blue is one of my favorite colors. So all of that combination drew me into looking at how he put those things together. But I also like textures and contrast. So how those textures can start to say other things to the individuals that look at them. And so I'm not just looking at artwork, I'm looking at fabrics in a store or patterns in some of the things that I get or other people get and what that might translate into later. So I'm looking at more than just artwork, I'm looking at everyday stuff, um, plants and leaves, trees, bark, grass, how one shape will move in front of another shape and the contrast that that creates. So it's a lot more about the natural things that I'm looking at day to day than anything else. I like the idea that an individual will get drawn into one aspect and then they get closer to it to inspect it and they start to find a lot of other things. Because some of those things I've printed in just automatically with the way I print in the studio. And then I've sort of faked a lot of other things too. So whatever draws them in, they think is an illusion when actually it's literal, and then some things they think are literal are actually illusions. So I like the idea of, especially in these kinds of things, drawing in a viewer with some thing that caught their attention, whatever that thing is, and then they keep investigating to find other stuff. Hi, my name is Kathleen O'Connell. I am an associate professor of book arts and letterpress at MTSU, and I'm also an artist. My art style, I work a lot in the media of printmaking, uh, including letterpress, but all kinds of other printmaking too. In the exhibition here at the Rotunda, my work is mostly done on letterpress, on a letterpress that's um, from the 1950s. So this collection of work, um, the meditation prints or series as I call them, are based on a combination of visually, they involve a lot of decorative elements. I'm, I was thinking a lot about plaid and checkerboard and thinking about actually like workers flannels and tablecloths and, and things that are very functional. Um, but the series itself is basically a meditation on labor. Uh, I did a lot of thinking about labor and about working. My partner works in construction and we undertook a very large project at our house this year. So I made these prints beforehand because I've been in awe of just sort of the act of labor and, and how it's heavy work and it's con physically consuming. Um, and just since we've done the work at our house, I just have, it's been sort of this many month long 
meditation on how important labor is. And so I wanted to make a series of prints where I got to think about um, what that means to labor. For me, this exercise of printing is really also this exercise of time I get to spend in my, my own mind thinking about appreciating all sorts of things. So I've done this series of prints thinking about um, a gardener, the, the labor of landscaping and moving dirt. I'm also a gardener, so I can appreciate that on a, another level. It takes me forever to dig a hole <laughs> in our clay soil here. And thinking about the artist and people who can make things, people who can bake bread, people who just can make things with their hands. I think it's such a magical process. And um, I especially love that over time, art changes meaning. So now in the time of this pandemic, we, we've done a lot more thinking and I've done a lot more appreciation of the essential worker and thinking about nurses. And now that we're going back to school, thinking about teachers and thinking about people who are working in places where they haven't had the chance to be off of work um, or been able to work from home. So uh, this, this series of work is about, um, I have imagined a character named Aunt Sally. And I've imagined this Aunt Sally person, it's a little autobiographical, um, but not exactly. Um, so Aunt Sally in my mind is this woman who lives in the South. And I, I've been thinking about sort of a few things as being somebody who's not from the South, currently living in the South. And this body of work also combines um, my love for uh, the fiction of Isabel Allende, especially her book, The House of Spirits, and um, the magical realism, which is sort of a, a theme that actually is an interesting connection between uh, South America and the American South as well in, in literary terms. So I was thinking about this character, Aunt Sally, who just occupies a, a space of being in the South and thinking about the connection between me and, and this Aunt Sally character, which is this Aunt Sally kind of is placed here. She belongs here. And thinking about in my own position, there's always a duality happening. Um, I spent a lot of time in South America. I lived in Peru for almost three years. Um, and, and thinking about how when you're in Peru, you're American. And when you're here, you just know too much. <laughs> and you kind of can fit into some groups, but you're always sort of on the outside and you never quite fit in. And in South America, it was interesting being this always permanent outsider. In all of these pieces, there's a lot of duality. The, the text at the top and the decorative portion at the bottom. I think what I also really love about these works is the, the colors, but the decorative elements. So the, this body of work and the other body of work that I have on exhibition both use a lot of decorative elements, and I'm incredibly interested in decor decorative things, wallpapers, patterns, uh, textiles. So I was just thinking about how to translate those. So I used some printing tricks to make that happen and um, created these prints. What's not clear on all of these uh, this prints in this series is that on the back side of them, there's actually paper quilting. Um, and it's really hard to figure out how to frame a piece <laughs> and show both sides of it. So I've opted not to because it's the less important side. But I love knowing that on the back side of these, there's a whole other composition happening of collaged paper and um, offcuts from some of these prints and then some decorative paper as well. I would love for you to come and visit the exhibition at the Rotunda. It features work by five of us, um, myself and four of my colleagues who are also friends. Um, it's interesting always to me to see the work hanging on the walls. Usually when we see each other's work, it's in our studios and it's laying on tables and it's overlapping other work and there's other um, scraps and pencils and tools and things everywhere else. So it's lovely to see this work hanging all in one space together. And it is a great opportunity to see 
the connections between the work and how each artist is working in their individual way. I would love to spend a little bit more time myself looking at how all of the connections, uh, what all of the connections are between the work. It's always interesting to me to see what um, a group of artists who are working near each other sort of in a work environment end up producing as artists um, in their creative work and to see that there are kind of similarities that run throughout the work and I like thinking about why that is.